नमस्ते आई एम मिनी एंड वेलकम टू माई चैनल फूड अटोमिक डू यू वॉन्ट टू मेक द बेस्ट होम मेड वीगन स्वीट एंड स्पेशली वेन दो स्वीट आर फॉर दिवाली वॉच दिस वीडियो टू मेक थ्री फेमस इंडियन स्वीट गुलाब जामुन सूजी पीठा एंड जलेबी एट योर होम विद रियली सिंपल इनग्रीडियंट एंड स्टेप बाई स्टेप इंस्ट्रक्शन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द वीगन गुलाब जामुन रेसिपी वी वुड नीड फोर स्लाइसिस ऑफ ब्रेड सिक्स टेबल स्पून ऑफ कोकोनट मिल्क वन कप ऑफ शुगर टेन टू फिफ्टीन थ्रेड्स ऑफ सेफ्रॉन विच इज ऑप्शनल एंड थ्री टू फोर एलमंड अगेन ऑप्शनल वी विल स्टार्ट बाय प्रिपेरिंग द शुगर सिरप टेक वन बोल ऑफ शुगर एंड एड इट टू पैन नाउ वी विल एड द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ वॉटर सो वी आर एडिंग वन बोल ऑफ वॉटर टू द पैन एज वेल and we will cook it over medium or low heat till the sugar gets dissolved completely after 15 or 20 minutes you will see the sugar is completely dissolved now we will go ahead and add the saffron threads saffron threads are optional but it gives such a great flavor to sugar syrup so i always add them let the sugar syrup cook for another 10 minutes over low heat then switch off the flame and let it cool down now we'll start preparing the gulab jamun balls Take four slices of bread and cut off their edges. I'm using a whole wheat vegan bread, but you can use any bread of your choice. Once you cut off all the edges, we will go ahead and break them into smaller pieces and we have to make sure that the pieces are as small as possible. Once you're done with all the bread slices, we will go ahead and add the vegan milk. I'm using coconut milk here. Try adding 2 spoon at a time. Since I have prepared this multiple times, I directly added 6 spoons because I know that's the ratio I use for this recipe. But when you are preparing this, go ahead and add 2 spoon at a time and mix it thoroughly. Now we have to mix them and make it into a dough. Make sure that you are mixing it nicely and avoiding all the lumps. So in between, I'm also crushing if I'm finding bigger chunks of bread. We have to keep mixing it till it becomes like a sticky dough. Our dough is ready. It is completely nicely minced together. Now we'll start to shape them into round balls. So take small amount of dough and start rolling them. Roll them till it is really smooth. Now we'll repeat this action with the rest of the dough. Again, you can shape them into smaller or larger round balls. We will reshape them one more time before adding them to the hot oil. So take a pan, heat the oil, and once the oil is really hot, go ahead and add the gulab jamun to the oil. Make sure to turn the flame to medium before adding the gulab jamun. Otherwise, the gulab jamuns will turn brown immediately and might not get cooked from the inside. We are going to cook it till it becomes little brown. Once you see this color, take out the gulab jamun from the oil. The gulab jamun looks really good. Now we'll go ahead and add them in batches. Add the gulab jamuns but give a time of 15 seconds in between so the gulab jamuns don't stick together. All the gulab jamun are cooked.
Once they are slightly cold, go ahead and add them to a fresh bowl and then add sugar syrup on top of it. Ensure that the gulab jamuns are completely dipped in the sugar syrup. We'll mix them nicely and then set them aside for 3 to 4 hours so they absorb the sugar syrup. I like to eat gulab jamuns cold so I had put them in the fridge. Now I'll garnish them with some almond flakes which are optional. The next recipe is suji pita or semolina pita. Another famous sweet from India and perfect for Diwali. We would need semolina or suji 200 grams, plant based milk 1 liter, oil 3 tablespoons, dry fruits are optional, sugar 1.5 cup and saffron threads 10 to 12. We are starting by preparing the sugar syrup. We will take one bowl of sugar and add it to a pan and then take the equivalent amount of water and heat them together. Mix them together and we are cooking this over medium or low heat. As you can see the sugar is dissolved in water and we will add the saffron threads. This step is optional but saffron adds such great flavor to the sugar syrup. Let it cook for 10 more minutes over low heat and then we'll switch off the flame and let the sugar syrup rest. Now we'll start with the pita preparation. Add 2-3 to three tablespoons of oil to the pan. Then add half cup of semolina or suji and mix them together. We are cooking everything just for a minute over medium heat. You will see there is no change to the color of semolina or suji. Then we will add the milk to the pan. I am using soy milk. You can use any milk of your choice. And keep stirring everything so that there is no lump formation. We have used 1 liter of soy milk. Remember to stir continuously as the milk might get stuck to the bottom of the pan. It's really simple to prepare this recipe but it does take a lot of time and patience. As you can see the mixture is boiling now. We'll keep stirring every 2 minutes. The mixture will keep on getting thicker and thicker. We are almost there guys so keep mixing everything. When the mixture reaches this stage, add one third of a bowl of sugar to the mixture and mix everything together. After adding the sugar, turn the heat to low and cook it for another 10 to 15 minutes. As you can see, the mixture is getting thicker. We have to cook it for another 5 more minutes. Pita batter is ready. Now switch off the heat and let it cool down. I am using a mixture of dry fruits with condensed soy milk for the filling of pita but this step is completely optional. We will make the pitas when the batter is still little warm. Add little oil to the hand and take a small amount of dough and start rolling it. Roll it in a round shape till it is really smooth. Then press it little to make it flat and add the filling of your choice inside. The filling is completely optional and you can just roll them in a round shape and add them to the sugar syrup. Now seal them nicely and roll it again into a round shape. Once it is smooth, add it to the sugar syrup. Now we'll repeat the process again and make pitas from all the batter. And there goes the last one guys. Our suji or semolina pitas are ready. Don't they look amazing? Now we'll refrigerate the pitas for 1 to 2 hours for them to absorb all the sugar syrup. Serve them cold and you will love them. They are one of my favorite dessert.
to make the jalebi we are going to use these ingredients i have also listed them in the description section we will start by preparing the sugar syrup so in order to prepare the sugar syrup we are using brown sugar i have taken around 200 grams of sugar which was around one and a half bowl and now i'm going to use the equivalent amount of water and add it to a bigger bowl and heat it we are going to cook this over medium heat mix everything till the sugar dissolves completely Once the sugar dissolves, add half teaspoon of cardamom powder. If you do not have cardamom powder, you can also choose to add whole cardamoms. Then add around 15 to 20 threads of saffron. Saffron will bring out a very lovely flavor in your sugar syrup. We will let the sugar syrup cook over low heat till it becomes thick. You can check the consistency of the sugar syrup. If it is sticking in between your fingers and you are able to see this kind of thread, that means your sugar syrup is ready. Also remember that once you switch off the heat the sugar syrup will get even more thicker. Meanwhile let's prepare the batter for the jalebis. Add 150 g of all purpose flour to a big bowl followed by 1 tsp of baking powder. Mix the dry ingredients well. Now comes the most important part. Add small quantities of water to the flour and make the batter. Do not add too much water at once and keep mixing. And we have to make sure that it is not too watery and there is no lump formation. So after 5 to 7 minutes of mixing, you will get to this point where it's flowy but not too watery. I'm using black gram lentils around 50 grams. I have soaked it for 2 hours, but you can also replace this with 2 tablespoons of cornstarch. I've churned the black gram and made it into a smooth paste. Now I'm going to add it with our existing batter. Mix them together till they are well combined. As you can see the batter has become little thick. So I'm going to add 1 tablespoon of water and mix it. So Again guys remember consistency is the key do not add too much of water we still need some thickness in our batter now we are going to put the batter into a piping cone you can totally diy this at home with a plastic bag make sure that the ends are sealed while you are doing this step so the mixture or the batter doesn't flow out of it do not fill the plastic bag too much just fill it up to 30 to 40% of capacity Now heat oil in a pan. I'm using a white pan for this. And once the oil is very hot, go ahead and start making those jalebis. You can make them in any shape, but the traditional jalebi shape is these small concentric circles. So I'm starting with the smaller circle and finishing it towards the outside and then closing it just like that. Do not add too many jalebis to the pan as the oil might get cold and the jalebis won't rise properly. Now we'll let the jalebis cook. After 3 to 4 minutes, I'm going to turn the jalebis. So flip them just like this and let them cook over the other side. So after a couple of minutes the jalebis are cooked properly they are looking perfect and orange in color now it's time to add them to the sugar syrup so make sure that all the oil is dripped out from the jalebi and then add it to the sugar syrup also ensure that the sugar syrup is not too hot or not too cold it's warm so the jalebis will absorb it properly dip the jalebis properly inside the sugar syrup Meanwhile they are soaking the sugar syrup we will prepare our next batch We'll let them soak in the sugar syrup for 5 to 7 minutes and then take it out and serve them hot So as you can see with just 150 grams of all purpose flour we were able to make quite a number of jalebis I'm garnishing them with some chopped pistachio but it's completely optional So guys, wasn't this an easy recipe? It is so delicious and everybody in the home will love it. 
There we go guys, three perfect sweet homemade recipes. So do try making them at home for this Diwali season and let me know your feedback in the comment section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of these vegan and plant based recipes, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to receive regular updates. I'll be back soon with another interesting vegan recipe. Until then, bye.